Hey, yo, what's shaking, y'all? This is Mr. Cap Cabernet, lifestyle connoisseur. And once again, these are confessions of a lifestyle connoisseur. Confessions of a lifestyle connoisseur. These are confessions of a lifestyle connoisseur. I'm pretty sure you never felt this kind of... So, um... <clears throat> it's early in the morning. 6.30 a.m. I'm about to get it in my workout and get back to my purpose. But um, I want to touch on a subject. A subject that's very near and dear to my heart. A subject that I've studied and length for thousands of hours over decades of research. This topic has been discussed in great lengths all over the internet for the last couple of years. Uh, debates and uh, arguments between uh, the two sexes, this gender war, so-called gender war, right? I'm gonna make this real clear. Um, there's an imbalance. There's a, a colossal imbalance within the universe and within between men and women, okay? And this subject is the sophisticated dynamics that govern the relationships between men and women. I'm gonna keep it real simple because, you know, it's complicated, but it's real simple. And it, it's been over, overly complicated um, because I think that everyone's missing the point. This goes, this goes into just something real simple and primal. And we can break this down into two points. Masculinity and femininity. Now before you start asking, well, how do you qualify cab to talk about this or what do you know about that? First of all, I'm more, more qualified to talk about this topic than most of the people you see on the internet or most of the people you're gonna to talk to in general, most men you're gonna to speak to. Number one, I grew up with nine sisters. So I saw the inner workings of the female being, her psyche, her energy, her, her patterns of behavior, et cetera, et cetera, her nature up close and personal as a child, okay? When I was 16, my girlfriend was 21. When I was 21, my girlfriend was 32. Later on, I ran a, a escort service for the pleasure of women only by men. Where well, I got to examine the psyche, lifestyle, and inner workings of older women. Also was married for 21 years, okay? Recently divorced. I also had mistresses. So I've done it all. I've experienced the highs and the lows, the pluses and the minuses of dealing with women from all over the world. Okay? So that's how I qualify, Mother Fletcher. Now that we got that out the way, like I said, we're going to break it down into just two simple categories, masculinity and femininity. Men and women both possess masculine and feminine hormones, okay? Men have more masculine hormones than feminine hormones, and women have more feminine hormones than masculine hormones. That should be common sense and understood, right? The problem is, in modern day and today, today's age, today's day and time, today's man and woman do not really know their own nature. So it is almost impossible for them to understand or know the opposite sex nature. Follow me. For instance, if a woman is a feminine woman, 
she's by, by nature she's looking for a masculine man that is her opposite we are the direct opposites of each other we complement each other so by nature a feminine woman if she's in her feminine state of being by nature she is she requires a masculine man masculine energy masculine characteristics in a man to complement her to balance her vice versa if a man is sitting in his masculine state his natural state by nature he requires a feminine energy in a woman feminine characteristics in a woman to complement his masculinity at the same time if he understands his nature as a masculine man and those traits and characteristics that come with being a masculine natural man he will be repelled and disgusted by a masculine woman and he'll be able to detect that masculinity in her off rip okay the same way a, a, a feminine woman will be able to detect feminine attributes or femi feminine energy in a man if she is a feminine woman because she knows her she knows that energy okay <clears throat> so if you're looking for a queen and you're a king right you're a king among men you can detect whether or not this woman's a queen If you're looking for a king and you're a queen, right? You can detect a king. It's very simple. Okay? But if you don't know your own nature as a queen, right? You're going to treat a king, when you meet him, you're going to treat him just like a jester. Or any other player on the board. Because you can't, you don't even know your own nature. And if you don't know your own nature, you're probably playing both sides or you're probably taking on the opposite nature of your sex. Now, I believe that men know this better than women, honestly. Men have been told for decades what women want in a man, right? They're all masculine attributes. The, some, some very clear, basic masculine attributes of a man are provider, protector, problem solver, leader. Simple. There's more, but those are the basics. The divine feminine attributes of a woman are softer in nature, a nurturer, caretaker, submissive, healer, these kinds of things, a supporter of a man. <clears throat> so because we don't know our own natures, we run around talking about I want a king and I want a queen but over the past I don't know 50 years women have become more masculine I'm not gonna get into why exactly that is we're gonna we're gonna get back to that at a, another another part maybe we'll call this part one because that's a long conversation so this is part one we'll get into that in the part two why women have become and how women have become more more masculine but by, by default, while women have become more masculine and are celebrated for their masculinity, men have become more feminine. So the balance is out of whack. It's really, it's really that simple. We, ha we have been deprogrammed from our natural nature and reprogrammed so that the shoe's on the other foot. Men are more feminine. Today's men are more feminine today's women are more masculine 
So the roles have gotten skewed and twisted. To the point where a, a, a woman that's looking for a masculine man and she's not going to know the difference. She's not, she doesn't even know the attributes. And even if she knows the attributes, she doesn't know her attributes, her feminine attributes. So she can't grasp that man. Okay? Because he's not looking for the masculine energy that he already possesses. On the contrary, what he's looking for is the opposite of him the what complements him the feminine attributes so when a woman says things like you know well i should be able to get whatever man i want and 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 actually lock him down because i got my own crib i got my own ride i got my own job or career or or uh you know whatever she didn't say nothing to him to this man that she wants that represents anything in her femininity that will that that uh, that that man is actually looking for now i'm not trying to say that you shouldn't strive for what you want ladies that has nothing to do with this pay attention get out of your feelings for a second what I'm saying is those things are not the feminine attributes that a man requires, that a masculine man requires. So if you have all those things and you don't have the natural feminine characteristics and attributes, he's not interested. And vice versa. If a man says something like, hey, I think I should be able to get any woman I want on the market. Why? Because I get my hair and nails done on, on, on Wednesdays and, you know, look at my Gucci bag and all this foolishness, right? She's gonna look at him and say, well, that's not, those are not masculine attributes. Those are feminine attributes. I require masculine attributes. That's all cool. You should take care of your hygiene and you look good and all that. But those are not masculine attributes that complement my femininity. I'm supposed to be the pretty one. You too pretty. <laughs> Women know what I'm talking about. Some dudes is just too pretty. She wanna do to look good, but not better than not better than her. Some of y'all dudes walking around looking prettier than the than the chick. This is just facts. And I challenge you, any one of you, to debunk the facts. It's nature. The same way a gay person, you ever heard gay people, I've heard gay people talk about, you know, I know when I know when you know I I I, I can recognize another gay person when I see him or when I meet him. They know because they they, ha they can recognize the frequency. It's a frequency. It's an energy. It's not just a look. It's a frequency. They're on that frequency, so they recognize their own kind. It's the same thing with men and women, masculine and feminine. A feminine woman can recognize femininity and masculinity in a man. A masculine man can recognize femininity or masculinity in a woman. We are the the judges of each other's attributes when we know our own attributes okay a king can recognize a queen if he's a king a queen can recognize a king if she's a queen if you are neither you can't recognize either i think men understand this a lot better than women because it's it's usually women who say things like you know why would he say something like that or why would he do something like that i would never do something like that or say something like that yeah you wouldn't because you're a woman 
men say certain shit a certain way. They say certain things that you wouldn't say. They do certain things you wouldn't do. It's just man shit. And it's looked upon as toxic by a lot of women because they don't know their feminine nature. So they don't understand that this man's just doing masculine shit. Masculine shit is not all positive. The same way feminine shit is not all positive. Right? But you don't hear men running around talking about why would she do that? Why would she say that? I would never say. Men know that women are not going to say and do things that men do. We know that. We know your nature is not our nature. Even if we don't understand your nature, we understand that we don't understand. Women, a lot of times, just write it off as, well, he's toxic. That's toxic masculinity, right? Or uh, he's he's a uh, 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 misogynist. He's, there's, there's all these different words y'all come up with. This is ridiculous. He's just being a man. He's not he's not a dog or a child. He's a man. What's the opposite of a dog? A female dog. That's a bitch. Yeah. Women can be bitches sometimes. If a man can be a dog. But I prefer to just call them women. They're doing women shit. It's fueled by emotion. Men are, men are seduced by sight and women are seduced by sound. Which is why men that know how to talk to a woman get the best results. And women go through great lengths to make themselves appear as beautiful, physically beautiful as possible because men are seduced by sight and women are seduced by sound. We inherently know this, see? And we do this subconsciously. We don't even think about it. Women would rather a man tell them a sweet lie than a sour truth. Yeah. Yeah. Because it sounds sweet, it sounds good. Why do you think R&B singers, R&B music is one of the, always has been one of the top genres, but the main, the dominant fan and the dominant consumer of R&B is overwhelmingly women. Overwhelmingly, it's not even close. Most of the R&B music that is consumed around this world is by women. Why? Because of two factors. The male R&B singers are singing sweet nothings. Sweet shit that's, they're saying sweet shit to a woman that she'll probably likely never hear from a man in her life. Because it's it's all like ridiculous shit. You know, I'll, I'll swim, the, swim the seas and climb the highest mountain for your love and I'll die for you and you know, um, you are the only one for me and, you know, um, I can't breathe without you and all this kind of shit. That sounds sweet to a woman. She wants to hear that shit, but it's not really realistic, but it sounds sweet. Not only does it sound sweet, but it, it actually, the octaves sound sweet, like the, the, the sound of his voice is sweet. So he's saying some sweet shit in a sweet way. Right? And they eat that shit up like a buttercup. Also, on the other hand, they listen, women listen to a lot of female R&B singers. And what are they talking about? Heartbreak that a man caused them. Their feelings. Um, sadness. You know, uh, all, all that kind of shit. So... The women R&B singers are talking to them because they're, 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 they're tapping into their emotions and their feelings and they can relate to that. Because even the R&B singers have went through that shit. So these are the dynamics. Men don't predominantly listen to uh, R&B music and, and, and take it emotionally. The music sounds good, it sounds good. You know what I'm saying? Men are more concerned what the R&B singer looks like when she's singing, honestly. 
that's just our nature matter of fact being in the music industry as long as i've been in it i remember i was at a major label at universal having a meeting with a very well-known exec and he told me he said listen right now the music industry what we're signing and it's, it's not even right now it's, this, been, this has been the same the same play since the beginning but he said right now we're only signing male artists that other men want to be like and women want to fuck and we're only signing female artists that other females want to be like and, we, and men want to be with or should I say have sex with that's why you see the artists looking like they look and sounding like they sound this is our nature it's real simple and when we overcomplicate this shit, this is when this shit gets out of hand. That's why it's out of hand. Okay? You got men walking around with tight pants and purses with their nails done and, and all this kind of business. And women walking around with deep voices. Okay? Uh, yelling and hollering. Threatening to slap a man. And, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> it's... The, it's it the balance is out of whack so the solution to all of this is deprogram and reprogram to our natural state if we ever get to do this we will see a total change through the sophisticated dynamics that govern the relationships between men and women i wish us all success in this but we'll pick up on part two and get into more detail. We dig. Once again, this is Mr. Cab Cabernet, lifestyle connoisseur, and these are confessions of a lifestyle connoisseur. Confessions of a lifestyle connoisseur. These are confessions of a lifestyle connoisseur. I'm pretty sure you never felt this kind of.